just thank Gaussian elimination. Gauss' Jordan elimination can be used to solve systems of linear equations. In fact, Gauss-Jordan elimination is going to be the method we use throughout the rest of this course. It may take a few more steps than Gaussian elimination, but the last step, the back substitution, is much simpler. And since it can be done quickly on our calculator, a few extra steps aren't really going to bother us. Let's solve this system using Gauss-Jordan elimination. So we'll write down the augmented matrix and perform Gauss-Jordan elimination on it. Now, the first step of Gauss-Jordan elimination is Gaussian elimination. And because we've already done two examples of that in the previous videos, I'm going to do that off camera to get to this. Our leading entries are here, here, and here. We need our leading entries to all be one. So this is fine. We have a one here. We'll divide the second row by negative one. And we'll divide the third row by negative one to turn these both into positive one, like so. And now we should start with the lower right leading entry and turn everything above it to zero. So these steps I'll show the first row I'm going to leave alone for the moment, and the third row I'm going to leave alone. How do we get rid of this one? No, we need a negative one. So if we multiply the third row by negative one, and add it to the second row, that will turn this one to zero. And when we multiply this third row by negative one, notice that this zero and this zero remain zero. So zero times negative one is zero plus zero. This doesn't change and this doesn't change. Zero times negative one is zero plus one is one. This turns to zero. Negative two times negative one is negative two plus negative three. negative five. And now we'll use this one to turn this negative three to zero. The third row isn't changing. The second row isn't changing. Three plus negative three is zero. So if we multiply the third row by three and add it to the first row, this turns to zero. This and this don't change. 
three times two is a six plus zero is a six. Everything above this leading entry is a zero. We're done here. Move up and to the left. And now we'll use this one to turn this to zero. So the third row isn't changing. The second row isn't changing. To get rid of this negative two, we need a positive two. So the second row times two plus the first row. This doesn't change. This turns to zero. This doesn't change. Negative five times two is negative 10 plus six is negative four. Now we're in reduced row echelon form. And the power of this form you know, kind of make itself known with this next step. So remember that these first three columns correspond to variables. The last column corresponds to equality. Each row corresponds to an equation. And what are these equations? Okay, first row, one X, plus zero y plus zero z equals negative four. The second row, zero x plus one y plus zero z equals negative five. This third row, zero X plus zero Y plus one Z equals two. So there really isn't any back substitution step. You can read the answer off very quickly. And this is the advantage that reduced row echelon form has over regular row echelon form, where you get the matrix into row echelon form here. And then you'd still have to solve equations. You'd have to solve for Z. And then once you solved for Z, you'd have to solve for Y. And then once you solved for Z and Y, you'd have to solve for X. There's none of that 